This video is sponsored by Mubi. We all know the cliche that art teachers really hate it when you draw anime. But why? Is it because anime is too popular? Are art teachers all complete snobs? I want you to keep that question in mind, and we'll come back to it at the end. For now, let's talk about Godzilla. In a way, my reaction to American Godzilla is like an art teacher's reaction to anime drawings. I acknowledge its quality, I enjoy its authenticity, in fact, I am having a blast. Yet, the critic inside me is like a harsh teacher. I know it can do better, but it is not. This feeling has only been intensified when Godzilla Minus One rose to challenge the world. It's like I'm、um, seeing a particularly talented individual led astray by a very fundamental mistake, a basic decision that made Hollywood incapable of creating something that can rival Minus One or Shin or the original. And I don't like that feeling. I'm not saying that because I'm a weeb. I am, but that's neither here nor there. I say this because American Godzilla is about Godzilla, but Japanese Godzilla is about life. What is Shin Godzilla about? From the nuclear hit to the hazmat suit, the earthquake and the tsunami, it doesn't take much for anyone to realize that this film is a metaphor for the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Indeed, facing the devastation caused by Godzilla, the film sharply satirizes political incompetence. It examines the unequal U.S. and Japan relationship. It makes fun of the masses for not taking an emergency seriously. All of these details mirror real-world events. Shin Godzilla is a deeply political movie. But Shin Godzilla is hardly the only one. The OG Godzilla is often mistakenly interpreted as a film about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. While we certainly drew inspiration from that, the film had a much more pointed purpose. Godzilla came out in 1954, back when the U.S. was conducting nuclear tests on Bikini Atoll. The location is closer to Japan than it is to U.S. mainland. It was as if the U.S. was flexing its reach. Tragedy struck on March 1st, 1954, when a Japanese fishing boat was exposed to nuclear fallout due to one of the bomb tests. The resulting radiation burn is too graphic to be shown on YouTube. One fisherman would die during the treatment for acute radiation syndrome. This event shook the nation of Japan. The opening scene of Godzilla emerging from the sea and attacking a fishing vessel is a direct reference to this real-life event. Godzilla would proceed to Island Hop before invading Japan mainland, a la Operation Downfall. Godzilla isn't just a film about the terror of nuclear weapons; it was a protest against the U.S. This is the purposeful nature of all good Godzilla films. In Giant Monsters or Attack, the highest-grossing film of the Millennium series, Godzilla is interpreted as a supernatural monster born from the rage of fallen World War II soldiers. The film minimizes the nuclear angle. After all, the Cold War has ended. Instead, it examines Japan's spirit in the post-war era. It urges Japan to move on from the shadow of its blood-soaked past. This entry would indirectly inspire Godzilla Minus One, a film that took all of the previously mentioned elements and pushed it even further. At its highest height, Godzilla is about war and politics. At its lowest low, Godzilla is still about pollution and even bullying. Godzilla's ability to transform into topical issues is why this kaiju remains relevant 70 years later. To this day, this giant monster urges Japan to examine and re-examine itself. This is the soul of Godzilla. Of course, Japan is no stranger to anti-war films. As an example, Shohei Imamura's Black Rain is a brutal look at the horrific aftermath of Hiroshima. It's a perfect companion film to go along with Oppenheimer or Godzilla Minus One. Yasuzo Masumura's Red Angel is a much more controversial but thought-provoking look at the dehumanizing nature of war, examined from the perspective of a nurse at the front line. If you want to see these films for yourself, may I recommend Mubi? In fact, Mubi is how I found Red Angel in the first place. 
Mubi is a streaming platform dedicated to elevating films from around the world. With a diverse curated catalog, I find Mubi to be a perfect place to browse, learn, and watch new films. Right now, from Canada, if I want to see a classic, I can put on The Black Report, and if I want something more badass, I can put on a Bit Takeshi movie. You may know him as the dude from Ghost in the Shell. I know him as the dude who calls Devil Man a piece of trash on an award show. If you also want to check it out or bathe in the glory of Bit Takeshi, you can try Movie Free for thirty days at movie.com/axinthecinema. That's m-u-b-i/axinthecinema for a whole month of great movies. If you enjoy our videos, I think you enjoy Movie as well. So give it a try today and explore the colorful world of cinema. Let's not pretend Godzilla is always this classy. While this series has enormous highs, most of the time Godzilla remains a cheesy tokusatsu featuring people in rubber suits. This is especially the case during the Showa era, when Godzilla had its first and longest-running series, totaling 15 films released almost annually. Towards the end, it had run out of steam. The films became episodic, and the monsters started to act like wrestlers. To a fan, these much sillier iterations are every bit as Godzilla as the best ones. This is where Hollywood Godzilla draws its inspiration from, from Godzilla's rivalry with King Ghidorah to Doctor Serizawa blowing himself up near Godzilla to Mothra always coming in pairs, but only one of them ever gets action because of budgetary reasons. By most metrics, the American series is remarkably faithful. You can tell these films are made by Godzilla fans, wrestling fans. That's right. Let me ask this question again. What is the American Godzilla series about? Kong and Godzilla team up to fight against the sudden intrusion of Mecha Godzilla. It is hype as f. If you are familiar with Mecha Godzilla in the first place, it's as if Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage were having an epic battle. When suddenly Andre the Giant shows up and forcing the two to form a temporary alliance, it sounds awesome to wrestling fans. To me, Hollywood Godzilla is functionally a series about another series. There are dream matches between beloved characters. They are high budget fan films. Though it is no pale imitation, it is still just an imitation. Indeed, the American series rarely, if ever, tackles real life issues. The best it ever does is a condemnation of eco-terrorism, an inoffensive position against a non-issue. That's why, why I love these films. They are never more than simple guilty pleasures. American Godzilla has the form, but lacks the soul. When Charlie Chaplin was making *The Great Dictator*, a movie that satirizes and condemns Nazism, it was met with pushback. According to his autobiography, he was warned by United Artists regarding censorship, and the film may not be shown in the UK, which was not at war yet. Remember, the extent of the horrors in Nazi Germany was not widely known in 1939. What Chaplin did was controversial. It was a deeply political movie that ruffled a lot of feathers. When the film came out, however, it was received with wide acclaim. Making fun of Nazis became the American way of life. This is why it always grinds my gears when people say that they want politics to stay out movies and games. The most powerful and enduring art in history are often political. Picasso's Guernica, Beethoven's Symphony Number、no. Three, Fritz Lang's Metropolis, f**k it, Rage Against the Machine. Hollywood has done this before. Predator. Aliens, Rambo, these beloved mainstream action movies were products of Americans' reflection on the Vietnam War. RoboCop, set in corporate-controlled Detroit, satirizes the inhumanity of unchecked capitalism. They Live by John Carpenter condemns consumerism and wealth inequality. These movies were about people's lives. They were examination of our world. They are classics. Yet when it comes to Godzilla. All we get is, oh, giant monsters are cool. That's something that's been lacking in recent Hollywood movies. Studios are so afraid to upset a politically divided audience that blockbusters 
have no bites. Somehow, reality itself has become a controversial topic, so much so that our movies don't even want to talk about it. Until America has the guts to see itself in the mirror and examine itself, Hollywood Godzilla will never be a classic. Remember the question at the beginning of the video? Now you know the answer. If your anime style is copied from someone else's, you will always be an imitation. But if you can derive an anime style from real life, then you become a master. The same applies to Godzilla. To realize the series' full potential, we have to look to the real world. So here is an idea: What if Godzilla represents Nazism? Once a significant force in the U.S. in the 1930s, it was defeated, but then regrouped and begins terrorizing the modern-day U.S. What if Godzilla represents the American foreign policy in the Middle East, a monster of America's own making? What if Godzilla represents the COVID pandemic? It marches from China towards the U.S., causing a disaster made worse by denialism. Is it cringe? Does it make you uncomfortable? Are you strong enough to think about the hard questions in life?